What happened with the 10 men on the, the fourth down? How's that happen? Yeah, you know, we, we addressed that internally and talked about it with, with the players and staff. And you know, it was one of the things we just got to over communicate and, and get that thing executed. I assume you didn't notice it at the time either. Yeah, I mean, obviously when we, were, when we got onto the, on the ball, we noticed it. So Is it at that point, it's just too late to relay a timeout at that point or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Wait, why, why would be, that be too late to call a timeout if you noticed it? Well, that the timeouts would be something that I wouldn't call. Um, it would be at the discretion of Dave's. How conscious are you either going into a game or during a game of Saquon's workload? Say that again. How conscious of you, whether it's going into a game, just yeah. making the game plan, or once the game's rolling, of Saquon's workload? Yeah, very conscious of it, You know, making sure that he's in the right spots and um, calling good stuff for him. When you look back, what's been missing and what do you got to get? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just it's a combination of, um, you know, trusting it, all of us, you know, players and coaches trusting it, executing it, getting the right fundamentals and techniques. Um, and I think that that will just come with the work. And that's why we're, you know, we come to practice today with a, with a good mentality, um, a good attitude. And I think we can clean up a lot of those things that we've been that we've been missing the last couple of weeks. What are those things, some of those things that have been missing? Yeah, just like I said, like the fundamentals, techniques, the execution part of it. So each week we go through and evaluate it and, and talk about all the details and see how we can continue to simplify it for the players and, and give them stuff they can go and play fast with and execute. Mike, how difficult or um, challenging is it to start a game running the ball? I mean, you guys have not been running well, and not, often has not been good early. I mean, especially for a team like this where people expect you to run the ball. I mean, do you have to set it up? How difficult is that to start a game and say, we're going to run it? Um, I, think, I think you have to have flexibility. I don't know if you can go into one game saying one way or the other. You have to be able to adjust. So, you, you know, you, you come in with your initial game plan, your thoughts on how they're going to play and um, things that they presented on tape, right? You go back and you trust what they put on tape and trust that your study and your, uh, your prep is correct. And then you get into the game and to the flow of the game. And then you got to adjust, whether it's by scheme, personnel, formation, the plays. Those are things that, you know, that we talk about, you know, in and out of series. Do you think Evan Neal can help a lot in the run game this week? Yeah, I think, you know, today, yesterday was a good day. Today we'll continue to evaluate it. And obviously Evan is, is a good player and he had some juice to, to the O-line room and, you know, what he brings. So I, I'm excited for him. And I think today we just take it kind of day by day and, um, you know, continue to work on all those fundamental things that we talked about earlier. Where do you stand at this point uh, at left guard? Excuse me? Where do you stand at this point about, about left guard? I know you have a yeah. bunch of guys' options now. I, I think Dave's, Dave's hit on it yesterday. Just we're rotating some of those guys to, to get them. And some of it's by, you know, it's this time of the season where there's, you know, guys are dinged up. We're trying to make sure we keep guys fresh, but then also putting guys in those spots to um, get a look at them. Mike, there's a time in the league where you say get the running game going and you would never say you've got to get the quarterback part of the running game going. But do you feel like that's a part of the game that that you need to get going more? I mean, everybody looks at Saquon, but do you feel like you guys got to get him more involved in that? Sure, sure, it helps. I think it's part of every game plan. We've had it since the beginning of the season is, you know, being multiple with the run schemes, being able to use um, the backs, being able to use DJ out in space on a couple different things. So. It's something we look at every single week. Did you think Daniel had opportunities to run in Dallas where he did not? Like, would you have liked to see him run more than three times? Um, I, I'd have to go back and look at every single opportunity again and from that respect. But I thought he did a good job of when it was there, stepping up, trying to get the Modi can, and in the run game part of it, I think he was accurate with his reads. You know, sometimes there's, there's parts of it where it's a zone read where you're reading a certain defender, whether it's first level or second level. And so we got to stay disciplined on that. Um, but, you know, I think I, from what I remember, I thought he did a pretty good job of negotiating that. Why do you think, based on sheer volume alone, his rushing numbers have decreased kind of as we went along here during the season? Re can you rephrase that again? So why do you think Daniel's rushing numbers, like totals just by volume, mm -hmm. have decreased as the season went along? Oh, okay, yeah. So. I I think defenses have done a good job of, of, of defending that, you know. So when we look at the schemes on um, how we can get DJ on the perimeter, 
Um, you know, so, some teams might play the defensive end just a little bit different. So that way they take away the QB run if, it, if, that, if that's being uh, effective. So we got to be flexible and <clears throat> create compliments off of those things. So that, that's where we're at right now within the, within the season is what are we doing really well? How can we build compliments off those things? And then we got to go and execute it. You, does, yeah, Daniel's done a good job. He's he had a good good day yesterday. It was good to see him out there and, and bouncing around um, in the pads. So you know, anytime you can add another guy to the offense, gives you some flexibility from a personnel standpoint, but then gives you some flexibility too from an execution standpoint. How does it affect your game planning that Washington just played a team that has similar uh, offensive skill set to you guys? Yeah, you you look at that and you study it and see if you can find any kind of advantage from an offensive standpoint um, w with their personnel, with their structure, with how they're playing certain um, concepts, run and pass concepts. We, we're looking at that and evaluating all that. How did they play Mariota in your mind, his running ability? Well, well, I, I don't know if I want to d divulge exactly how they did it in, in relation to how we would do it, but I thought they had a good, they had a good game plan. Obviously, they won the game, so um, you know they felt, I'm sure they felt that they executed it, but I think there's some elements there that you know we can take advantage of. Mike, you obviously going back to the spring when you guys started putting this offense together, you envisioned a role for Bellinger, and then you, you, we saw him grow into that role. Maybe not so much what he can give you on Sunday, but are there things that you can identify that with him out that you lost in this offense that you've been trying to find? that now if he's coming back, you could actually get those things back into your attack? You know, I'd say this. I think the guys that we had in, they stepped up. Right? We had a great next man up mentality throughout, really throughout all these injuries that we've had. Um, guys have stepped in. They've played huge roles for us as an offense. They've stepped in and done everything they can. they played their butt off. And so really when I'm looking at that, um, you know, obviously when Belly comes in, he, he does a good job and he, he goes and does his job. That's what we're going to ask these guys to do. Whether it's um, the run run game, whether it's the pass game, you know we're asking our guys to go out there, run the fundamentals and techniques that we ask them, and play as hard as they can. And our guys are doing that, and so that's that's one thing you can build on. Well, you, third more, well, Mike, you, you mentioned um, um, if, if, you know opposing defenses know that you know Daniel has this option, and, and the defensive ends are playing him a little different. You mentioned you need more compliments. That is it. Um, disappointing that you guys have not had a counter to that where, where if they're taking that away you can go to something else right away and find success there um, I think we're working through that and that's <clears throat> each week you know each week you got to go through that process and you know continue to build off of what you did the week before or weeks before and that's where we're at today you know that's where we're at today in practice you know we're working on our situational stuff third down red zone and that's that's part of our process. I mean, you should be able to a team should be able to make their defense pay, right? If they're going to, you know, sell out in one direction, I would think. I think I think I think you have to have the the flexibility to have compliments off of your concepts that you have, your run and pass stuff. Michael, you meet with Odell Beckham tomorrow as part of his free agent visit. Do you not? Yeah, you know, I think um, I know Joe and Dave's have a plan on how they on how they want to work it. I'll wait for for them um, on how exactly they want to do that. And we'll, we're, we're all on board on, on however Joe and Davis want to work that.